All right, a video on synthetic division. In Algebra 2 pre-calc, there are a lot of situations where you are going to need to divide a rather large polynomial, in this case a fourth degree polynomial, by a smaller polynomial, in this case a linear, a linear binomial. All right, when you have a large polynomial divided by a linear binomial, what I want you to do is I want you to synthetically divide. Use synthetic division to divide this, right? Your other your other option would be to do long division. So you'd have to actually go like, you know, x plus five divided by, and you'd have to write the whole thing out, right? It's worth worth knowing how to do, I guess. But you know, it's just like back in back in uh, fourth grade when you learned how to do like, you know, one twenty six divided by four. Right, it was let's see three, and you multiply, and you got a zero, and you brought this down, and that goes in once, and you subtract it, and you got two, so your answer was thirty-one point five. That's kind of like long division, right? You can do that with algebraic expressions as well, but right here, I'm going to teach you how to do synthetic division. All right, so right here, we're dividing by x plus five. With synthetic division, if you're dividing by x plus five. I actually want you to write negative five as your divisor out here, All right? Because this is, uh, if anything, it's going to be a factor, and we know that there's a nice connection between factors and zeros. In other words, if we have like a, if we have a factor of x minus eight, then our zero is x equals eight. All right? If we have a factor of, uh, if we have a factor of like x plus ten, then our zero, our, our solution is x equals negative 10. So it's always like the opposite, right? So if we're trying to divide synthetically, what I want you to do is always change the sign of this thing right here. All right, the next thing I want you to do is put these coefficients in order. So just extract those coefficients and put them just like that. So we're going to get rid of the x's for now, the variables, and we're just going to use straight numbers. So here we go. 4 comes down here. That's step 1. Step 2, 5 times, or excuse me, negative 5 times 4 is negative 20. And then I want you to add these two and get negative 8. Negative 5 times negative 8 is 40. And then I want you to add these and you get positive 9. Multiply negative 5 times 9, you get negative 45, add those, you get negative 1. Take negative 5 times negative 1, you get positive 5, add them, and your remainder, your remainder is 0. That means that this is actually a factor, that's actually a factor of the fourth degree polynomial. I think, the, I think a fourth degree polynomial is called a quartic. I think you have quadratics, cubics, and then quartics. Uh, that's kind of a little side note there, a little trivia. All right, so your answer is, let's see, this is your quotient. It's going to be 4x, and then since we started with a fourth degree and we divided it by a linear term, your new, your quotient is actually going to be a cubic. So you take that 4 and you subtract it by 1. You reduce all of your of your exponents. So it's 4x to the third. We're using this minus 8x squared plus 9x minus 1. This is your right here. This is your constant term. That's your constant term, c. And then this is your remainder. In this case, our remainder was 0. So we don't have to write anything else. So this is what you get when you divide that really crazy long quartic by uh, x plus 5. Number 2. So if you want to, I, I would pause it right here and see if you can do this one on your own. x minus 8, I'm going to put a positive 8, and I'm going to put my synthetic division. 7 goes right here. Negative 56 goes right here, and 5 and 3. Those are not 
consecutive. There is a fourth degree term that's missing. So I need to account for that by putting a placeholder. Again, five and three, five and three are not consecutive. Six, five, four, three, there's a four missing right here. So I need to placehold that with a zero. Minus 12, positive 105, negative 82, positive 80. So here we go. Let's see if we can go a little faster here. Bring the seven down. Eight times seven is 56, add those together. Eight times zero, zero, add those together. Eight times zero, zero, add those together. Uh, eight times negative 12 is negative 96. Add those together, you get nine. Yeah, that's nine. 72 is next, that's eight times nine. Add those, you get negative 10 and negative 80. Remainder again, your remainder again is zero. <clears throat> so again, when the remainder is zero, that means that this is a factor. So your quotient, what's remaining here is seven x to the fifth, because remember we, if we start with a sixth degree, if we start with a sixth degree polynomial, then we have to reduce that by one plus zero x to the fourth plus zero x to the third minus 12 x squared plus nine x minus 10. Our remainder again is zero. And that's our constant term. We can probably simplify this another step though. We don't need those zero terms in there. We just kind of skip over them. So that's what you're left with when you divide that whole big crazy six degree polynomial by this linear x minus eight. It's just seven x to the fifth. <clears throat> we skip over these, we don't need those. Minus 12 x squared plus nine x minus 10. All right, so what happens if the remainder is not zero? So let's look at this. Again, if you want to pause this, go ahead. We have negative four, and we'll set this up. We have one n to the fifth, zero, we have a placeholder there. Remember what I said, there's a five and a three. There's a four in between, so we have to set up a placeholder. And then we have <clears throat> negative 24, negative 40, negative 40, negative 30. Make sure I didn't screw up any of these. No, I think I'm all right. So here we go. We're going to bring down the 1. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Add those together. Negative 4 times negative 4 is 16. Add those together. Multiply, add, multiply, add, and add finally at the end here. And we get a remainder of 2. So when your remainder is a non-zero, you do something kind of interesting here. So let's let's take care of this. We have one n to the fourth. Again, we'll reduce that by one. So we have one n to the fourth minus, let me go back to uh, the same color here, minus four n to the third minus eight n squared minus eight n minus eight and now watch this, we're gonna go plus two divided by our divisor, n plus four. Just like we did back in fourth grade, right? In the, in the thing that I showed you way the heck up here earlier, I deleted it, but you always took that remainder and you divided it by your divisor, whatever's out in front. And there's your answer. So there are three examples how to use synthetic division. And this has a lot of applications when later on when you're asked to find uh, roots, rational roots, all, sort of all sorts of crazy things with really large polynomials like fifth degree, sixth degree, stuff like that.